Now it's time for the rural news with Kim Moody in Ōtotahi. And Kim, snow in the south is making it harder for farmers to feed stock. Kia ora Charlotte. Yeah, a wintry blast has seen temperatures plummet across the South Island. So a chilly day for farmers with snow falling in some areas. Heavy snow warnings are in force for inland Canterbury with forecasts of up to 25 centimetres of snow falling. On Mount Summers in mid-Canterbury, it's one degree and still snowing. Farmer David Ackland says about 15 centimetres has fallen. It's actually relatively pleasant once you're out and about. Yeah, it's just, just the snow is restricting the ability to get stock feed um, simply. Just the grass is all covered up, so we're just having to put out extra supplement and, and keep them moving. Uh, the dairy cows are sort of calving at the moment, so we're going to really maintain their energy levels and make sure we get their feed right and their minerals right. So we're just um, one man's on that constantly for the day, and we'll just be going backwards and forwards pretty much. David Acklin says staff are taking extra precautions in the cold as carving gets underway, and it's a around the clock job. Born in the snow is born in the snow. To, it's just actually making sure we pick them up pretty quickly. So the guys will be checking them regularly, and we'll pick those calves up and get them uh, into their calf rearing barns and get a get some colostrum into them, and then uh, they're right as rain, really nice and warm and dry, and away they go. So it's just about being regular, systematic in, in our in our day, and making sure we just. Keep on going out there, double-checking, picking them up and um, drying them off and, and feeding them. But David Ackland says the weekend's weather was actually far worse for them to be working in, with 45 millimetres of rain and wind gusts of up to 170 kilometres. In Southland, Dean Rabbage, who farms near Wyndham, says it's about 2 degrees, but with the wind chill, it feels like negative 3. Wind chill today, it's pretty cold, but we just had a, a doozy of a frost this morning. But um, like I said, it's going to clear away and be a pretty good day. There's a few calves on the ground, but everybody is very vigilant. Um, calves are in the paddocks and picking them up pretty quick, so it's not an issue really. Dean Rabbage says until now, Southlands had a great run of weather, dodging the heavy rain that has soaked most of the country. A rural health doctor says the latest wave of COVID-19 cases has stretched rural providers very thin. There were 3,500 new cases reported in New Zealand yesterday. Gary Nixon is an associate professor at Otago University's Department of General Practice and Rural Health and also works at Dunstan Hospital in Clyde in central Otago. He says the last month has been really tough. The last wave has been the hardest. COVID has, as we predicted, has uh, really exacerbated and, and unmasked the workforce problems in rural, in rural areas. In the last few weeks, uh, you know, a lot of rural health services ar- around New Zealand have, have really, really struggled to continue to provide care for their communities. He says COVID has really tested rural health services and many have struggled to provide routine care to patients. I think it's fair to say that uh, in a lot of places, my colleagues are, are, are pretty tired. Why was the last wave the hardest? I think because, I'm not certain of the data, but certainly our yeah, strong impression on the ground was that this last wave tended to affect the more vulnerable, you know, tended to affect more uh, the older age groups. And those people who uh, up until this stage had, had managed to shut themselves away and, and avoid it to a certain extent. Mr Nixon says the number of COVID patients presenting themselves to Dunstan Hospital is starting to tail off. Business New Zealand says primary sector employers need to market themselves better if they want to attract young workers. There have been massive staff shortages in the past two years due to the closed border, and that's forced some in the primary industry to start new courses, visit schools, and even offer incentives to attract people into roles. At a recent conference, Business New Zealand Chief Executive Kirk Hope was asked how employers can be youth ready. As employers, we're certainly going to have to market ourselves harder, whether that's to the world or whether it's to, to our young people. And I think helping young people understand you know, what the industry is about will probably require a lot more work than it has done in the, in the past. Obviously, at the moment, the vocational education system is, is still operating. It's going through some pretty significant changes. Um, but that is an opportunity for, for employers to, to tell their story much much more directly to that generation. And I said, you know, there is a lot of really good stuff going on in the training world. Talk much more about it. Uh, I know that New Zealand farmers are fantastic 
fantastically resilient and really, really good at what they do. And people offshore understand that. Onshore, here, and with young people, um, we need to tell that story, I think, a lot more directly because it, this is an amazing set of sectors doing incredible world-leading things. And we've heard a lot of that and, and deploying some incredible science and technology. So that is a great story. It should be a great story for young people. Tell it, please. Kirk Hope, Chief Executive of Business New Zealand. A fifth-generation Manawatu farmer and poet says writing about his work and its challenges is key to his way of life. Tim Saunders' new book, Under a Big Sky, Facing the Elements on a New Zealand Farm, speaks to the ups and downs of rural living, the impact of environmental change, drought, financial pressures and farming during lockdown. He told Nine to Noon he struggled with the sense of conflict between his farming and art. I've grown up in a very practical environment uh, where, you know, you've, you're working on the land, you're doing things if you're helping animals or you're fencing or you're, you're doing something that you can, that, that, that's tangible and, and helps people in some way. Whereas art has always been something that maybe I didn't feel earlier on that it was adding anything to, to anybody really. But uh, as I've got older, I've found that art is actually a vital part of my life and of getting what's what's deep inside me internal and and making it external. So there's there's a whole lot of benefits of, of that for me. That's poet and farmer Tim Saunders. And lastly, the New Zealand meat company Alliance is claiming a wee bit of credit for powering some of our athletes' performances at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. The farmer-owned co-op has been the official supplier of beef and lamb to the New Zealand Olympic Committee, including its Pure South Beef and Lamb range. That's the rural news for today. Koe rātou porongo o te tai whenua.